Hello everyone and welcome back to Circus Tutorials. My name is Chuck Clark and in today's tutorial we'll be teaching you the basics on how to throw and catch a yo-yo as well as how to make the yo-yo sleep at the bottom of the string. And so before we get into the tutorial we're going to have to get a yo-yo to use. There are a lot of different shapes, sizes of yo-yos as well as different price ranges from different companies. Usually these are for different styles of yo-yoing, like for example, this green one here is for what's called off-string yo-yo, where there's no string actually attached to it, and it's a lot like Diablo mixed with yo-yoing. Diablo or Chinese yo-yo, for those of you who might not know. Really cool style of yo-yoing, but it does take a little bit of uh, understanding of the basics, so we're not going to be talking much more about that today. What we're going to be talking about is yo-yos that we can learn the basics on. And so for example, in my right hand here, I have the Shutter from Yo-Yo Factory, and this is a non-responsive yo-yo. And my left hand, I have the Hornet from good old Duncan, which is a responsive yo-yo. What non-responsive and responsive means is a responsive yo-yo, if you throw it down, it'll come back up. Or if you make it sleep, you can get it to come back up with just a simple little tug, and that is a responsive yo-yo. This is usually used for what's called two-way or looping, where you actually loop it, and usually this is done with both hands. The non-responsive yo-yo, on the other hand, is actually the more popular option, but I would recommend starting with the responsive yo-yo first, and I'll talk about that right now. So the non-responsive yo-yo means that once you throw it down, when you give it a tug, it actually won't come back up on its own. What we actually have to do is we actually have to manually bind the yo-yo and make the string catch before it'll come back up. So I would recommend a responsive yo-yo at first to get the hang of the basics and find out if you like it. And if you do, then you can upgrade to the non-responsive yo-yo, which will lead into a lot more tricks. And again, the more popular style of yo-yo. So now that we have our yo-yo, the string is on it. There's a little loop at the end. We are ready to go, but where do we start? Well, the first step is we're gonna have to put it on our finger. So a lot of people will take the loop of string and put it directly on their finger. And that's actually not what that's for, because this actually leaves a very loose loop on my finger and it can easily slip right off. And we definitely do not want that to happen when we go to throw the yo-yo, slides off my finger and goes across the room. So what the loop is actually for is to make a slip knot. And so the way we do that is fold it back on itself and pull this longer length through the loop, making a loop like that. And then when we slide it down, now it'll actually pinch onto our finger and now it's a nice secure grip and it won't slide off my finger when I go to throw the yo-yo. And that's how we're gonna put it on our finger, making the slip knot onto the finger and we're good to go. I would recommend the middle finger for learning. I see a lot of people use their index finger as well. Um, I would say try to start off with just the middle finger because it is more comfortable and will lead into more tricks in the future compared to if you're using the index finger, will feel a little bit more strange. So once it's on our middle finger, we are going to wind it up. So depending on your yo-yo, you will be able to just grab the string, gently wind. Once it goes around a couple times, then you can go a little bit faster and wind it all the way up into our hand. Sometimes, depending on the yo-yo, you'll start going around and it won't catch. And what we can do there is use our free hand, pinch a little bit of the string, and then go around. Once it catches a couple times, let go. That little loop will get eaten up into the yo-yo and it is wound and ready to throw. And that little loop, once you throw it once, that loop will go away and will be a nice clean throw to start with. So now that's wound and on our finger, we're ready to begin. So when we hold the yo-yo, we have to pay attention to which way the string is winding around the yo-yo because we actually want that to go towards the front. So it's kind of winding in this direction and we want that string to go towards the front of our hand first, towards the fingertip. And the reason for that is because when we throw the yo-yo, we're going to have our palm up and rolling it down so it will naturally roll off of our hand if it's wound towards our fingertip. If it's wound towards our palm, when we go to throw it, it's not gonna to wanna to roll off right and it'll actually sometimes just get stuck on your hand and feel really uncomfortable. So we're just gonna turn that around and then it'll roll off of our hand quite naturally. When starting, I see a lot of people just have their palm down and kind of toss down and back up down and back up and that's fine just to kind of get the feel for how the yo-yo goes up and down but we really want to turn our hand over gently fling our wrist forward and let go of the yo-yo 
This will automatically put us back in that same position because once we throw it down and catch it, it's automatically back in that good position where we'll roll off of our hand quite naturally. Where if we go down and up, it switches sides. So now it's towards my wrist. Now it's towards my fingertip. And we want it as much as possible to stay towards the fingertip so it's nice and relaxed and comfortable to throw off of our hand. One thing that will also happen while you're practicing and doing this is you have to pay attention to your string tension. Because every time we do this, this yo-yo is actually turning a half a turn every time we do it. So we throw it down, half a turn. Throw it down, half a turn. So half a turn, full turn, turn and a half. And so the string will either get very, very tight or very, very loose depending on what hand you're learning with. So if you're right-handed, it'll get tighter. If you're left-handed, it will get looser. And so, I don't think my string is that bad yet, but you can see it's kind of twisting up on itself. If it twists just a little bit like this, you're okay. But if it twists really, really tight and really violently, that means the string is too tight. And for that, you can just hang it down. Let's the yo-yo untwist a little bit. Give it a second. And then you can test it, see if it binds up. So right there, it's not binding up. That's a good spot. We can rewind. Don't worry too much, it can be quite a bit off, but if it is starting to get to the point where it feels like it's catching really, really fast and aggressive, it's probably too tight. Or if you can't get it to come back up at all, it's probably too loose. So just keep that in mind and keep an eye on the string tension. So hopefully you're getting the hang of throwing the yo-yo down and catching it, and that's feeling pretty comfortable. And a lot of people, after they learn this, they want to learn a trick. Usually either walk the dog or rock the baby. But first, we need to learn how to make the yo-yo sleep. And what sleeping is, is where it stays down at the bottom of the string before it comes back up. Obviously, we can't walk the dog or rock the baby if it's not going to want to sleep. And so there's two main ways that you can get the yo-yo to sleep, and really you can do both of them at the same time as well. One way is rather than throwing it straight down and back up, you can actually throw it forward a little bit. So if you think at like a 45 degree, a little bit like a foot or two out in front of you, what will happen is the yo-yo will swing a little bit more and that will make it so it doesn't jerk at the bottom and it'll want to sleep. Another way that you can do it is by just bringing your hand down with it and cushioning it at the last second. So straight down and then at the last second, it'll be hard for you to notice because it's a very small motion. Down and then bring your hand down just at that last moment to give it a bit of that cushion so it doesn't bounce and come right back up. And again, I mentioned you can do both of these at the same time, so you can throw it a bit forward and still cushion at the end. Play around with it, find what makes it comfortable for you. Now once it's sleeping to make it come back up, it's actually pretty easy. All you do is give a little tug with that opposite hand. It'll catch the string and come back up. Again, this only works for responsive yo-yos. If you're using a non-responsive yo-yo, we're going to have to learn to bind the yo-yo and we can cover that right now. So again, I recommend learning with a responsive yo-yo at first, but some of you may have gotten a non-responsive yo-yo uh, just offline or something like that and didn't know it beforehand. So to get to come back up, what we have to do is once I throw it down with my wrist up like that, what I'm going to do is grab the string, take my throw hand, wrap it around the yo-yo, so now it's on the string again, and this little loop here, I'm going to throw into the yo-yo and give that little bit of a tug. I'll also do it from the side so you can see a little bit better. I throw it down, take my throw hand with the string underneath. With this loop, I'm going to toss it into the yo-yo and give a little tug with my right hand at the same time. Oopsie, mistimed it. Whoop. And that'll make it come back up. It does take a little bit more time to get the hang of binding, but I wanted to cover it just to make sure that if you did get a non-responsive yo-yo, this video would still be of use to you. And with that, that is going to be the tutorial, how to throw and catch as well as make a sleeping yo-yo come back up to your hand with both a responsive and a non-responsive yo-yo. Again, I would recommend learning with the responsive yo-yo first, just because it's much easier to get the hang of the basics and also it's much cheaper to learn with a responsive yo-yo compared to a non-responsive yo-yo. A responsive yo-yo like this Hornet Duncan, for example, uh, is $10 online, and you can also find them in a lot of toy sections at stores, a yo-yo like this to use, where a non-responsive yo-yo is much more expensive, like this yo-yo factory shutter, for example, is $50 online right now, and that's actually a very reasonably priced yo-yo. You can easily spend over $100 for a good non-responsive yo-yo. And 
Don't get me wrong, it might sound like a lot, but some of them are totally worth it. And if you're doing this a lot, I would recommend looking into some of those. But for starting out, I would say get the cheaper option, see if it's something you like, learn some of the basics. And if it is something you like, then you can upgrade to the more expensive option that leads to a wider variety of tricks. Again, as always, do all the YouTube things. We do appreciate it. And if you'd like this video, follow us for more and leave some suggestions for future videos you'd like to see down below. We do take your comments into consideration when making future videos and we love hearing from you and about all the cool stuff that you're learning as well. With that, my name is Chuck Clark. This has been Circus Tutorials and we'll see you in the next one. Oh,